Spalding for, for you know for coming over and playing us tonight. Obviously, uh, they're an institution here in the city that this city's proud of. Uh, I know the Grays um, coaches over there do a phenomenal job. Um, so they're involved in in the grassroots basketball at the youth level in this area. Uh, they're proud Louisvillians. Louisvillians is that how you say it? And um, and, and and they're great assets to to our community. So. Uh, they do a great job. They're well coached. They they uh, they had a good game plan tonight. They um, did their best to try to limit our three point looks, and um, and and forced us to drive the ball. I thought we responded well. We shot 72 percent at the rim, uh, got to the free throw line 36 times. It's kind of like some of the stuff you guys were asking the other day, like 55 threes. Like, is that what you want to do every night? No, we're going to do what what you know what the defense tells us to do and. They did a good job of taking that away, and I thought uh, we exploited them in in, uh, in other areas. So it's good to have these two exhibitions under our belt, play out in the Yum Center in front of the crowd uh, as a quote unquote practice. But it's on for real next Monday against uh, against Moorhead, and and we're uh, we're very excited, very excited about uh, about next Monday. Uh, Coach, big night for Kaysen tonight coming off kind of an emotional week for him. Kind of a two-parter question. What did you like out of him tonight? And uh, did you have any experience with Amir Abdul And uh, did you know him at all? And Yes. So, um, you know, coaching's a small fraternity. So we all know each other. We're all in gyms together, you know, throughout the spring and throughout the summer. Um, you know, it is. It's a tight, it's a tight-knit community. And, you know, um, you know, 16 years ago, I lost Coach Prosser, uh, who was my mentor when he died of a heart attack at the basketball office at Wake Forest. And um, it was, it was, you know, when, when I got the news that Amir passed away. So to answer your question, I did know him. I mean, we weren't close friends or anything. Uh, but man, is, is, is he a, a, a very, very, was, he was a very, very respected coach in the coaching fraternity. I mean, obviously, he was a world-class coach, a rising star in the business, but um, he had such humility. Um, he had such class. He was a man of character. And, you know, I'm very blessed to coach Kaysen because K- Kaysen's a fine young man. Um, you know, and to hear the way that Kaysen talked about Amir um, tells you everything you need to know about the quality of leader and teacher that he was. So we lost a great one. Uh, Great person, great family man, a great coach, and uh, and it's very sad, you know. And and uh, Kaysen got to go back to the memorial service yesterday. Uh, got back late, late last night, and um, you know we talk about the power of the unit all the time. Like it, it's based on the most powerful force in the universe, and that's love. And our guys all put their arms around Kaysen to help him uh, mourn in this really, really tough time. So uh, Kaysen had a big night, and uh, Corin had a big night. I think it was Rain and Fat had a big night the other night. I think one of the major strengths of our team, in fact, I know, is our depth. Um, it's not like you can look at our roster and in preparation and circle two names. You're like, man, those are the guys that you have to stop. You know, It could be two other guys the next night that have 26 and 20, whatever they had. Um, and that's, that, that's, that's a good thing. And um, you know, I thought Corn was sensational in the second half. His ball, I love ball speed. Man, I love when guards tilt the floor and they look like a blur getting up the floor. And when, when, when his engine's running the right way, man, he is an absolute blur. So those guys did a good job of, uh, of, of carrying us in a lot of ways offensively and had big nights. Coach, speak to your defense and what you've seen that you like and, and, and what you can kind of build on off these two exhibitions defensively. Yeah, you know, we played hard as crap. I don't know if I can say that. We played hard as heck. Um, deflected the ball, turn them over. We had we had like a record number of deflections tonight. So our guys respected their opponent. Um, we talked about having excellence in each possession and each war, which each four minute breakdown of, of the. And I thought our guys did that. Um, we fouled too much. Some of that was kind of being overzealous on the ball and in in uh, you know they were a driving team. They had two assists on the night, and by the end of the night. You know, give them credit. They they milk the clock, not milk the clock, but they pass cut, pass cut, pass cut, move, and then you know they picked a matchup and they put their head down. They just drove the ball. And sometimes when a team is so hell bent on just driving, with with kind of reckless abandon, it, it's hard. It's hard not to foul. 
Uh, but to their credit, they did a good job of putting foul pressure on us. And then some fouls that got us into the bonus that allowed them to get to the free throw line early were just kind of careless or, you know, in some ways, hustle fouls, which um, I don't like dumb fouls, but hustle fouls I'll take. We had several over the backs on offensive rebounding. I love offensive rebounds off of a free throw offensively, but you can't just push a guy in the back and go over his back. We had a couple loose ball fouls, diving after the ball. I'll take those all day long. But it's some of the needless ones and careless ones that we have to uh, we have to clean up. So if I had to say anything about tonight, we had to do a better job of keeping them off the free throw line. I think they got to the bonus at like the 12-minute mark in the second half. Pat, you mentioned how Spalding was doing a good job at taking away the three-pointer, but it seemed early on how it seemed you guys were operating with the intent to try and put an emphasis around the painted area. Was that the, the game plan coming into this game? No, it was just that's the way they were playing us. You know, I mean, they, they watched the tape. You know, we went 24 for 55 from three the other day. Like, they were like, man, we're going to – Rain Smith, we ain't letting him get any looks. And you saw Rain get in the paint, touch paint, got fouled, scored at the rim a couple times. You take what the defense gives you. So instead of shooting 55 threes, we shot whatever it was, 24 of them, but we got to the free throw line 36 times. So, you know, the threes present themselves by playing downhill on the attack. But they were staying attached to shooters, so we did a good job of finishing at the rim. Yeah. Uh, Coach, yeah, uh, 24 assists on, on 35 baskets. Yeah. Um, the way that they find each other, communicate there, how, how organic has that chemistry been, or how much have you had to really stress that from the outset? Um, Coach, uh, it, it, one of the things that was very noticeable uh, from the beginning of the game is how seriously uh, your team's demeanor is uh, before the game, just coming out, getting ready as the, uh, the starting lineups are being announced. And it seems like your team, every game throughout this exhibition season, both in the Bahamas and here uh, in the Yum Center, they've had a very serious demeanor about them. What do you like about your team's focus going into the games, and how does that translate to the regular season when it right. starts next week? Well, it's no secret that as we move forward, we're going to play better teams, more talented teams, obviously Division One teams. We played those two teams in the Bahamas, and they had some professionals on them. Then we played a college team from Canada, and then we played two non-Division ones. So, you know, um, we, we, we knew with these four kind of exhibitions that they were all going to be against um, you know, uh, uh, opponents that maybe don't have the size and length and talent and things like that. And I, I was I was a stickler on 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 respecting your opponent, excellence in the process, excellence in the scouting process, having a seriousness of purpose of what you do. Because I said, fellas, we're going to come out of this game in 40 minutes. And I didn't say like we're going to win because there's no guarantee. But we have to come out of this game and have gotten better. We got to grow from this game and. You know, there's a pretty good chance that we were going to have a lead in the second half, no guarantees. But when you get to that point, are you still sitting down and guarding and in your gaps and executing your pick and roll coverage and sharing the ball and executing on offense? Because otherwise, we're wasting our time. We're just out there getting some conditioning in or something like that. But th this group, even when we had big leads, continued to, to play the right way um, so that I think when we get to well, they're off tomorrow. We get back to practice. We can say, okay, we, we took a step in that game, which is really, really important as a team. You got to kind of have to continue to grow uh, every game, every practice. Hey, Pat, um, you spoke about you know just how just how deep this team is, and you know after getting to see everybody, you know I get a chance to play these past two games. Um, now that the season's you know here, um, how do you go about um, I'm building your I'm, I'm building your a rotation out? you know, I'm heading into this first game. 
Well, I mean, you know, I, I think I'll say it again. One of the great strengths of our team is, is our depth. You know, we've had four different, you know, guys that have scored 20 points in, in two straight games. And again, it might be two other guys in the next game. It could be somebody else in the game after that. Um, a strength of our team is our depth, that we can go deep into our roster and get major contributions from everybody. And again, it goes back to the foundational principle of the culture of our program, and it's the power of the unit. There's a bunch of guys in there that aren't as concerned, aren't concerned with their playing time, with their minutes, with their rebounding totals. They're concerned with winning, and it's what can I do to help the guy sit next to me. So whether it's a nine-man rotation, 10-man rotation, we got a group of dudes in there that are about winning, and that's why we have a chance to be really good. Coach, you mentioned obviously the teams you've played in these exhibitions so far, but Coach Gray described his team more of a defensive-minded one. For a team like yourself that has passed the ball around, made the extra pass a lot these past two games, was tonight a bit of a test to be able to see what you guys are still capable of when it comes to moving the ball around as you get ready for that? Uh, yeah, effort? I mean, I think it was good to play against a different style and philosophy offensively, right? You saw kind of what young Harris's thing was with like, man, we're – we might be out athlete it, if that's a word. So we're really going to pack it in and dare him to shoot threes. And then we did that. And these guys played us totally different, tried to run us off the three-point line. And so, so it was good to have to adapt to a different style and a different approach and a different uh, uh, strategy against us. So I thought that was good.